Welcome to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu, brought to us by Hudson Soft. Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu is an action-based platformer that stars Jackie Chan in a fictional adventure to save his sister. This game has some of the best graphics and best sprite animations I've seen on the NES, and it happens to be one of my favorite games that probably a lot of people didn't get a chance to play. So here we go with Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu for the NES. If you like the title screen, sit there for a few seconds, you get to see a short cutscene where we get to see the evil sorcerer show up and kidnap Jackie Chan's sister Josephine. Once the game begins, we have a scene of Jackie Chan meditating in front of a waterfall before he jumps up and springs into action as he now prepares to hunt down the evil sorcerer and save his sister. This large ancient Chinese scroll that rolls out shows us each level that we have to go to in the game. Right now we're at the very bottom, and when we reach the top we'll be at the final level of the game. There's a total of five levels in the game, each one has a boss at the end of it. You have your standard moves of a punch and a jump kick, as well as when you duck you can do a sweep kick. Most enemies die in one or two hits, and every time you kill an enemy they drop a sphere. You can see your sphere count at the bottom right corner of the screen. Every time you collect 30 spheres, you automatically refill your health, as well as you can refill your power meter that you have next to your spheres. You can see there's five little balls there next to the sphere count. What that is, is the amount of spheres that you have left in terms of your power-up, which you hold in the attack button to charge up a blast, and then release it. You're only allowed five before you refill it. There's also special bonus rounds in the game. This is the first one, I'll be showing the rest of them throughout the rest of the run. In this one, you have to jump from cloud to cloud. Every cloud you jump on will disappear slowly, so you only have a few seconds that you can stand on the cloud. But every cloud that you do land on and that disappears, you get a certain amount of points. Once the timer is ticked down and you've reached the end of the bonus level, it racks up your points and you can gain some extra abilities, such as refilling your power meter, as well as also gaining extra lives or continues. You technically only have one life in the game, but every time you do lose that life, you go back to the main screen where you can either start over or continue, and when you continue, you'll start at the latest screen that you were at. You can see the amount of points that you have that rack up. The top one is your lives, the middle one is a bowl, which is extra health, and then the bottom one was the refill my power meter, which I'll be using for the first time in just a second. Right here you meet some tigers, which are a little bit of a pain, so I'll usually use my charge of ability and release it, and you can see when I used it, one of the uh, spheres in the bottom corner disappeared. There's also special moves that you get throughout the game that you get from the item frogs. Every time you see one of those frogs jumping around, you can hit them, and they'll give you an item, whether it's full health, or one of the special abilities that you can only use a certain amount of times. Right now, I have a spin kick that I can use seven times. You have to hold up and the attack button in order to do the special move and usually, for the most part, you're going to probably try to save them for bosses. There's four of these moves total in the game, and I should be able to show off most of them, if not all of them, by the end of the game. In terms of difficulty, the game's relatively easy. The controls are great. All the moves are going to work the way you want them to, and the jumping's fantastic. In terms of platforming, it's definitely a relatively easy game, but it does have its challenging parts. There's going to be a lot of platforming elements in the game, including some fast scrolling levels that you don't have any control over how fast the screen moves. Some of the platforming, like these ones right here, are a little bit challenging because of the balance board type platforms, where you, when you're standing on one side, the other side shoots up, so you have to balance accordingly. I suggest killing the little mice by ducking and doing a swift kick, because even though they're really small and you can usually jump over them, they will backtrack after they go a certain amount of distance, and they'll come in back and hit you, so it's usually better just to take them out as soon as you see them. Now this is the first of the scrolling areas, and you can see that the screen's scrolling relatively quickly, and there's a lot of spikes to deal with. Be very careful when jumping from platform to platform that you don't accidentally miss and land on the spikes. Also, in case one of the enemies drops a sphere that you're not able to collect, I wouldn't recommend going back and trying to grab it real quick, especially with the screen scrolling so fast.
once we reach the end here, we can see that the screen stops scrolling and now we just have to jump up a series of platforms to reach the top of this area. Here, when you have these enemies that shoot the rocks out, just usually wait for them to shoot their first rock out and then jump at them to attack them. You should be able to dodge them in terms of losing any health. Once we enter this room, this is the final room of this level and it's our first boss battle. It's a rather large statue. When it stops flashing, you'll then see its arms start to move. And every time you deliver a hit to the face of it, you can see that its facial expression changes which shows us that we delivered a hit. Use up all your special move first. If you have these spin kicks, jump up and deliver the spin kicks as quickly as possible, jumping over the arms so that you don't take any damage. You should be able to defeat them if you have enough of them really quickly. If you don't have any of your special moves, just keep jumping and kicking and trying to avoid the arms, and you should be able to defeat them with only losing one or two health. In the second level of the game, you can see that there's a river of lava below us. And if you accidentally do fall off any of the platforms into the lava, you kind of bounce off of it like Mario does in Mario 64, and you end up only losing one health, so it's not like the worst thing ever if you do fall into it by mistake. For those enemies, I usually wait till they shoot out their blast and then attack them, and then attack them twice really quickly so they're defeated before they can get another blast out. You can get over these guys that are making the earth shake a little bit by just jumping on the top platforms above them. When we get later into the level, we're going to have to actually take them out. When you get to this platform, duck underneath the flow of lava that goes above you and then continue moving on. Just take your time, be slow with it. It's, the platform is going to work relatively well. If you see any lava shoot out from the actual lava pool, just duck underneath of it so it'll go right over your head in an arc. Now this part is probably one of the more difficult parts of this particular stage is that the ground is slowly moving up on you, and as you continue to move up the platforms, it's going to continue to move faster and faster. Also, any of the platforms, as you can see, when you stand on one in particular for more than a couple of seconds, it starts to break apart, and so you end up falling off of it if you're on the edges of it, and after only like two times, it'll break completely apart and you'll lose that one. So always make sure that you keep moving, whether it's jumping up and down on the same platform or jumping from platform to platform. Just keep active and don't stay on one platform for too long. When we finally reach the top, we go to the right. Now we're actually in a whole big ice area. For these guys, when they stomp the ground, the icicles fall from the ceiling. Wait for the icicles to fall, and then move in closer. Sometimes you may have to wait for two or three periods of icicles falling down before you can get a hit in, but that way you'll save yourself any of your health. Once again, wait for the icicles to fall down, move away from him, and then once he starts coming back towards you, that's a great opportunity to attack him. Anytime in this area where you can take the upper path, just take that. You have to be very careful while moving along the platforms, but it'll allow you to avoid any of the enemies on the ground. Once again with the mice, make sure you attack them, because they will, even if you jump over them, will come back at you and probably hit you from behind. For these things, just wait for the arrow to shoot out, and then jump up into attack them. For the second boss of the game, it's another large statue, where he'll use his big club to stomp the ground. Jump up and start using your special move if you have any. If not, start doing regular kicks to it. After a few seconds, he'll start flashing the actual pole, and he'll start jumping around the screen. Try to do your best to avoid it, and keep delivering your normal kicks or your special move until you actually have him defeated. Once he's done, we can move on to level 3. In level 3, we have a lot of platforming to do with some with these turtle shells. The green ones are the ones that will not turn actually into turtles and start coming at you or attacking you. When you reach the end of one area, you'll, you'll have to jump on one of the turtle shells and it'll take you up to the next area. If you fall at any point during this part, you will not lose a life, but what'll happen is you end up going to the level below. So you'll have to retrace your steps and work your way all the way back up. Take your time, avoid any enemy if you can. If you can get a good shot in on any of the flying birds, use it. 
but if not, try to duck or jump over them to try to avoid them. If it looks like you can't make a certain jump, just wait a couple seconds to see if the turtle shell that you're currently standing on is going to start moving in an arc pattern so that you can get over farther. <laughs> 